know each other. He's a friend from work. What's up YouTube, Magnus here, back with another video for you guys, and this time it is a multi-part series on how to put together a Thor Ragnarok costume. So the wife and I went as Hela and Thor for Halloween, uh, the costumes came out really good, we had five days to do it, and uh, I didn't get it all done. So, this is part one, which is me showing you, kind of just uh, giving you a little exact uh, thing. Um, I didn't film any of it but I want to film it, so I'm doing a multi-part series. So the rest of the parts of the costume, I'm going to film the process, post it in, in part two, three, four, five, six, and then at the end, we're going to go back and revisit this costume and rebuild it. So it'll be a while to get to that point, but for now, I just want to show you what I did with this costume because I, I'm pretty proud of this costume and I really wanted to share it with you guys. Maybe you can pick up a few tips or tricks that I did in creating this without actually showing you the whole process. First part is the discs. Discs are leather. So they've been dished slightly, which is, uh, I hammered them into a bag of sand, so give them just a slight curve. And then all these marks have just been stamped in with some punch that I had kicking around. It's not perfect, but it did the trick. And then I hit it with some Rust-Oleum spray and a little black paint, and I thought they turned out pretty good. This top disc is glued to this disc, and underneath, so this disc has lace, the bottom disc has lace put through it, and then the top part is glued over. And so the, the lace is firmly on there, can go through this bit and through the strap and fasten to the uh, armor piece, which uh, turned out pretty good, I think. The cape was glued and stitched to keep its folds. So you want those nice, nice folds to stay consistent. Um, I did a little bit of crazy glue, a little bit of stitching, if you uh, saw the bottom of it, it's uh, absolute catastrophe. It's just uh, loose ends of fabric and random stitching. It's not exactly a pristine piece, but it looks good on the outside, so I'm not really that worried about it. But if I was to do it again, I would do it a little cleaner. Um, think about it just a little more. I've seen a bunch of different Thor Ragnarok armor pieces that have the separation in all the uh, parts, but they don't have the middle part. So. The center I did with glue and leather lace. I just cut the leather lace in half. I have a bench skiver, so it's really easy to just run it through the bench skiver. Um, and that means I have more area, more of wider flat area to glue onto the base layer of leather. So this is obviously two pieces of solid leather with all of the puzzled pieces glued onto it, stitched and riveted, depending. The shoulder really wasn't that difficult. It's, uh, one, two, three, four, five pieces of leather. Um, they all kind of taper up. So it's a triangle that tapers up and that creates the, um, the shape. I did a little, I glued it all down. I hammered it a lot. Um, and then a bunch of turquoise paint. I actually dyed it turquoise as well. It was, a, it was an okay dye job, but the paint, paint is way better. I just used the paint. So all the seams are hammered a lot. It's really strong. Uh, don't have any issues with it and then it's just tied with lace up to the top. Now all these edges you can tell that there's been a piece of leather stitched on, uh, there's been glue put on it, it's folded under the, the whole piece and then stitched again in the ditch to try and conceal the stitches as best you can, but you can still see the stitches, but try to conceal them. And that locks it down and gives a nice finish around all the edges. Another thing to remember whenever you're making a baldric, um, is that, especially for film, you want it to sit flush. Now, if this is a, just a giant straight piece of leather, it's going to come here and it's going to angle out as you curve it. So this, this piece is curved specifically. So you've got straight, straight, straight. This chunk is curved all the way around, right? And then it goes, and then it goes straight again. Um, you don't have to do that, but if you're looking at doing anything in film, they really want it to be nice and, you know, form-fitting. They don't want to, like, they just don't want an exaggerated waistline, period. Despite it looking, it just looks bad to be hanging out like that. Um, a, a nice waistline in for film costumes is really important. Anything to get rid of that bulk, um, you're going to want to do that anyway. So, this is also riveted here to make it even snugger. Um, I think it flows around really nicely. 
It took a couple of tries to get it, but I think it looks pretty good. They used button studs or Sam Brown studs, depending on where you're from or what you called them the first time you ever used them. Um, so we've got little Sam Brown studs here, and uh, they're really they're really low profile and they tuck away nicely. So that's sticking with that whole theme that uh, you want to keep uh, everything snug, low profile, thin, uh, small waisted. Um, they just hide nicely. They're not like a big buckle hanging around. You don't have to have this giant strap dangling around from the uh, end of your buckle. Uh, this works out really nicely. Now, on the, uh, the Thor armor, it is raised. Like you can see some raising here. So what's happened here is I have used, I think like a four ounce leather base and then four ounce top. But then I also have, for each of these sections, there is a smaller version of that section. You can see the line here that's uh, being cut out of four ounce leather and glued to the back. And I've rubbed it to try and give it a little bit of pop because the uh, original had that kind of pop on. If you look at the movie, it's got that raised look. I actually think this isn't, probably isn't as raised as it could be. I thought it was more pronounced in the movie. I'd have to take a look, another look. But you can you can see it where I've, where it's popped out a bit here and here. All these little spots are raised. Yeah. I think it looks pretty good. I also heard people weren't really sure of the dye job on this um, piece. They, they saw some picture uh, pictures of Chris Hemsworth and it was more of a silver metallic look. There was some with brown. Um, I'm just making it look like what I thought it looked like in the movie. Uh, you never know what Chris, like, it was Chris Hemsworth was at a con, I think, and there's a picture of him and it looks silver. You don't know what version of that armor that is. Like, that could be some first version of the armor where they decided to make it look silver and he was allowed to wear it to the con because it wasn't very important because it wasn't in the movie. So don't just guess off of random pictures on the internet. There's so many versions of everything as they build it up to the final product that you, you never know exactly what you're going to get. Just make it look like the movie. It's a lot easier, I think. Well, that's about it, everybody. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for future videos. Head on over to my Facebook or Instagram. And if you want to help out the channel even more, you can head on over to my Patreon page where you can pick up Viking artwork and soon some of my patterns for a small donation every month. And until next time, keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.